I, I have a quick question. Yeah, what's up? Uh, hi. Hey. Um, I use an iPad Pro for schooling. Uh huh. Um, and the uh, they do have Adobe Illustrator on it. Is the mm -hmm. iPad version going to be fine for this class, or do I need to use a PC? Um, do you have access to a computer for yourself? I mean, my mom has a computer. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's similar. Um, it doesn't quite have all the features as the full version on a computer does. And I'm not quite sure the difference. Um, it would probably work for a lot of it for probably like 75% of the stuff. Um, so you can start with that. And then kind of as you like, you know, come up with something, you're like, oh, how does that work? Or then you might have to switch over to the computer version. Okay. And if we get back into the classroom, uh, we'll see if that happens. Um, you can always use the school's computers, like so you okay. can so you can use like that combined with your iPad as well, and kind of go back and forth. Okay. Um, but it's a good place to start, and I think a lot of it will be the same. Um, so you can start with that, and then just you know add. And we're I'm going to talk to you guys today. We'll have um, free access for you guys to download um, Adobe as well, so it won't cost you guys anything to do that. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Give it just a few minutes and then we'll get started.
All right. Hello there, everyone. How's it going? Can you guys all hear me and see me okay? Hello. 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 I can see you, yeah. Great. Okay, good. Got some responses, some thumbs up. All right. Hope everyone is doing well. I think we got almost everyone in here. There might be one or two more people coming in. So I'll give it just a minute. All right. So, yeah. Welcome to uh, the winter quarter here at Green River. Hope you guys are all doing okay. So we were supposed to be in person, uh, but those plans changed for the start of the quarter. How about that? Who could have seen that coming? Um, I know I was looking forward to kind of getting back in the classroom. I've been online uh, for two years now, basically. Have you guys been like last uh, quarter, did you guys take any classes in person or, or were you guys all online um, at all? I had a class that met twice a week in person, oh, one no, of my cool. English classes. Okay, cool. At Green River? Yeah. Nice. It's funny. One of my classes this quarter is in the same room at the exact same time. Okay. Some on campus, some online. All right. So it sounds like you guys have have had a little bit of a mix getting back into the at back into the swing of it. Um yeah, I, uh, I've, like I said, I've been all online, so I was definitely looking forward to getting back and seeing people in person uh, and things like that. But this whole COVID thing is fluid and, um, you know, trying to make, just follow what people think are the best decisions. And hopefully in a couple of weeks, we'll, we will be in the classroom and I can actually, you know, meet you guys face to face and all that good stuff, but we will see how it goes. Um, but we'll just, uh, you know, make the best of it. Like I said, I've been online for two years now. So my, this class is all set up to be done online. Um, and we'll just kind of start off that way. Um, and then as we go, we'll eat, we'll hopefully transition back to in person, but we will just, we'll just kind of play it by ear and, uh, make the best of it and, and just see how it goes here. Um, yeah, so this is Art 109. Has anyone taken um, any art classes at Green River or, you know, in your high school or any sort of art classes before? Emily has. Anyone else? Any sort of art classes, drawing classes, ceramics classes in high school and middle school, elementary school? The closest thing, I mean, I took a photography class. Okay. Which, I mean, art, but different kind. Yes, yes. Ceramics, all right. So uh, what's cool about this class is I try and design it um, to be widely applicable for all two-dimensional art, so flat art. So photography, painting, drawing, illustration, uh, cinematography for working in film. Um, everything in this uh, graphic design, any sort of those sorts of um, disciplines, this class can be applied to. So that's why it's kind of a fun class. And, you know, everyone has different backgrounds. And I want people that um, sometimes people are like super experienced and have been drawing their whole life. And some people are brand new. Is anyone like brand new to art, never like drawn before or anything like that? Maybe a little bit back when they were little. Just me. I mean, uh, drawing when uh, I, I was drawing when I was uh, little, but now okay. I just like I stopped like after five years, maybe more. I don't I cannot count. <laughs> nice. And then to come back here again. Okay, see that's that's good. So it, it I enjoy having that mix of kind of experience in the same class because um, you know sometimes when you haven't drawn a lot you know, you are free of bad habits and you're really like a blank slate and really you have nowhere to go but up and improve. Um, and you really kind of look at things with a different perspective than someone that's been drawing their whole life and, you know, has a lot more experience. Um, but the people with a lot of experience, they bring their own kind of strengths to it. So 
We will be looking at each other's work a lot in this class, um, looking at each other's drawings and things like that. So um, for today, we'll just kind of start out. Um, I'll just kind of give a general overview of kind of how the class is gonna go, uh, kind of what we'll be working on, um, how the class is structured. And then we'll do a couple, you know, quick, small um, lectures. And then I'll just give you some um, video resources for learning um, the computer side of the program as well. Um, so yeah, just to start to introduce, my name is Andrew Steers. You guys can all call me Andrew. Um, I've been at Green River since 2018. So yeah, I got like a year and a half before the uh, COVID hit and I've been online since then. Um, for my own work, I do a lot of uh, comic book art and storyboards and illustrations, things like that. Um, I love to go like draw and paint outside. Um, I live on a sailboat, as you guys can maybe kind of tell. So I like to um, draw a lot of boats and, um, you know, landscapes, views near the water and stuff like that. So that's how I spend a lot of my time um, drawing as much as I can. So um, for this class, you know, I've, you know, I went to art school. I've read a lot of art books. Um, I talked to a lot of different artists. So I just want to try and distill everything I've learned myself and just um, kind of give you guys the most important things that I've learned and the things that have helped me the most improve. So my goal is really just for everyone to improve and everyone to become a better artist um, throughout this quarter. So no matter where you are, are, if you're super beginner or your experience, I want everyone just to get a little bit better and hopefully look at your work from this first week to the final week of the quarter and just see an improvement in um, in your work. So for this class, we are going to be doing a lot of drawing. Do people have sketchbooks with them today? Something to draw with? Yeah, I have one. Okay, good. Awesome. Yeah, Julian, if you have a bad connection to, or, or my connection's bad, just ask me to repeat myself. I'm happy to go back and repeat anything. So yeah, um, I mentioned, and did you guys get that email I sent on Saturday, I think, Saturday or Sunday? Kind of outline the basic supplies. Since you guys have yep. sketchbooks, you probably did. Cool. So yeah, any sort of sketchbook should be fine. I find the ones that are about eight and a half by 11 are a good size. Um, some people use some that are a little smaller, or a little bigger. Um, but basically just blank pages in there. Some people use like ones with brown paper is fine too, or blank white is good. Um, because we will be doing drawing in this class. And so I want you guys to kind of get in the frame of mind of imperfect drawings. So I know that's a thing that held me back a lot as an artist when I was, um, you know, learning in, in art school was kind of that fear of making a bad drawing. And you kind of have to just switch your brain and not worry about making bad drawings. Everyone makes bad drawings. I make tons of bad drawings. Um, but the only way you can get to a good drawing is to make the bad drawings first. And you make one drawing and you finish it and be like, oh, that's not very good. But I do like this one little thing of it. So in my next one, I will improve it. I take that one thing I like and make it better. And then, oh, I don't quite like it, but I, it's getting better. And then you slowly make improvements and improvements. But the only way to get better is to put the pen on the paper and make a drawing. So um, don't worry if every drawing is imperfect. If every drawing, it doesn't come out the way you like. That's completely natural as artists and as people drawing. Um, so just try and get over that fear. I know it can be hard, but we're gonna do um, a number of different exercises throughout this quarter. Basically every week we'll have kind of different drawing challenges. Um, and that's gonna be the best way for you guys to get better and improve at your art. Um, and when we turn in the, the projects throughout the quarter, I'm gonna, see your rough sketches all the way taken to final art. So that's gonna be part of the thing that you turn in with each project is rough sketches. How do those rough sketches change? And then how do you change them and make it into good looking finished digital artwork? So um, that creative process is gonna be something we're working on with each project and hopefully improving with as we go through the quarter. 
Um, any general questions or anything that uh, came up in the email or that have come up so far that you guys have? Okay. So yeah, if I'm talking anytime, just feel free to stop me. You can turn on your mic and talk or um, ask a question in the chat and I'll just try and stop. So just let me know if anything comes up at any time. All right, so you guys all got onto Canvas, correct? What do you mean the dashboard? Yeah, the dashboard on Canvas. Yeah, I'm on the dashboard. Okay, cool. Yep. So I'll just pull this up really here and we quick and we can look at it together. <laughs> So everything for the class is right here, okay? Um, it's relatively simple. Well, let me go to the student view. So yours will look like this. So here's our four projects. So this is pretty much the entire class right here is these four projects. Um, each one had, it, I have the due dates on here already. So the first one will be due January 18th. Um, in like two weeks, and it has the amount of points they're worth. First one's 150, second one 200, third one 200, and the final is 250. So that's a vast majority of your points. We will do some um, discussion challenges. These are some of the drawing challenges. We will do these later on in the quarter. And I'll see um, how we do these, depending on if we go back to class in person. And when we go back to class in person, we may do these differently um, in class. Um, but we'll probably start out doing some of these um, here through Canvas. But my suggestion is to always look ahead at the next um, the next project. So you can look here at project one or uh, project one, introduction to Illustrator, and kind of seeing what that entails. Oh, it's locked. Okay, I'll unlock that. Um, and seeing what that project entails, kind of what you have to do, um, start thinking about what questions you need to ask me for that project and things like that. But always start to kind of look ahead and work ahead. Um, even though there's only four projects, I don't, I expect you guys to be working on each one of these projects more than the day or week before. Okay, so each project will take, you know, two or three weeks. Um, because we will be doing critiques with each other, critiques with, from me to you, and you'll kind of be working ahead on that project um, and not just working on it the day or week before. It's Each one will take a few weeks to complete if it's done up to a high quality. So, um, but it's all here. So I have, you know, within each project, um, I have kind of the description of what to do. Um, I have student examples from past quarters um some tutorials and things like that but it's all there hopefully to set you guys up for success so you can just kind of follow along with each project as we go through the class and see what's there um but again looking for ahead to these projects as soon as possible uh, will really help you guys do the best in this class okay Um, and then lab hours here to be determined when we are back in the classroom, uh, if that happens, when that happens, we will have, uh, I'll have times where I'm just hanging out in the, in the classroom in the computer lab. And the students that do the best in this class take advantage of those lab hours. They come to the lab hours. They ask me for my opinion on their work. They ask me how they can improve it. And that's kind of the, a really good way to make sure you are um, just kind of keeping up to date with all the expe expectations of the project. Um, so that's really going to help you guys too, is utilizing those lab hours. And depending on how long we're online for, you know, when I, um, when we were all online, I had digital lab hours. So we probably won't do that for the first two weeks, but if the if it takes us any longer to go back to uh, back on campus, then I'll end up having digital lab hours. And then just um, your grades as well. So make sure you're paying attention and seeing, um, just keeping up with your grades, seeing what your score is, seeing if it's as high as you want it to be, 
seeing what you can do to improve your grades. And throughout the quarter, there will be a couple opportunities for some extra credit if you ever need, um, you know, extra little boost of points to your grade. Um, there are, you know, there are consequences for late work, but I want to be pretty flexible for you guys. And uh, I understand a lot of different stuff comes up. You guys are taking other classes. A lot of you guys, you know, work other jobs and stuff. So if ever you're having trouble getting a project in on time, um, please just reach out to me and talk to me if you have any issues um, about what's going on, about turning an assignment in a little bit late and usually I'm flexible and reasonable with that but I do expect you guys to kind of talk to me about it if you just turn in an assignment late with no explanation that's when um, you will kind of take those late penalties but if you have a reason um, for that just let me know um I think that's pretty much it any questions on any of this stuff All right, so, so yeah, just always kind of keep an eye on Canvas and I will, I'll communicate through Canvas as well, through the um, inbox and messages on Canvas. That's the best way to get in touch with me um, as well. If you guys have questions, I check my email uh, Monday through Friday there. So if you ever have a question or want feedback on work or whatever, just let me know. Um, and I can do that and get back to you guys, um, to hopefully in a timely manner. So, yeah, so, uh, and now just for the general supply. So yeah, sketchbook um, is the main drawing tool or the main thing we will be used to drawing in. That's what you can take notes in during class. That's what you can do the drawing challenges in. And parts of each project will include um, drawings in your sketchbook as well. So. The, basically the uh, idea of the class and most of the projects is you're starting an idea in your sketchbook and then how do you develop that idea and use the creative process to then create final digital art in Adobe Illustrator. Has anyone ever used Adobe Illustrator before? Kenneth has, anyone else? How about Adobe Photoshop at all? Okay, no one, no one's used Adobe, all right. Uh, not me too, no. Okay, okay, so a few people have used Photoshop. Okay, cool. So Illustrator is a, uh, it's a very tricky program. Um, it's, it's very complicated and there's a lot to it. And it's not necessarily the most intuitive program, but once you learn it, it's very cool and has a lot of uses. I know it took me like starting to learn Illustrator and quitting like two or three times before I really got it down. Um, it's similar to Photoshop for those of you that have used it kind of in the basic layout of the program. Um, but um, kind of the overall tools are different. It's kind of like you're designing shapes in that program. You're basically cutting out shapes out of, a, you know, I like to think about cutting out shapes of pieces of paper and kind of creating images that way. So. You're just creating these different shapes to create larger pictures and larger the images of your final art. So um, you're gonna have to download that to your personal computer um, to get started for these first two weeks when we're back in the lab, all the computers there have Illustrator on them and you can use it that way. Um, but I just sent all your information to IT today. Let me see if he got back to me yet. And so hopefully, keep a lookout on your emails. Um, there should You should re receive an email from Adobe, hopefully by tomorrow or Wednesday, um, giving you access to a free download for um, Adobe Illustrator. So that'll have instructions of how to download it. Um, and if for some reason you guys don't get that email in the next couple of days, let me know. We'll meet again on Wednesday, so hopefully I will have heard back from IT by then to say that they've sent out all the notifications. But 
really for illustrator it just takes a lot of time and repetition kind of doing the same thing over and over until you get comfortable with the program it's like i said it's not intuitive at first when, as you first start to learn it but the more you do it the more it'll make sense and once you figure out the program it's really cool um, and you can create some really cool looking artwork with it um, it's still an industry standard program for graphic design it's used for a lot of illustration it's used for some website stuff um, so it's a really versatile program that a lot of different professional artists use um, and that is what we will be using to create our final art in this class. And again, there will be some frustration early on with it. Um, I'm going to kind of try and give you guys the best um, learning I can, but like really it's just kind of on your guys end to um, practice it yourself and kind of just do the basics over and over um, until it really kind of makes sense and becomes second nature. I'm going to send you guys this link really quick. So in the chat, so save that link that I just sent you guys in the chat. That is a link to the YouTube playlist for Illustrator tutorials. Um, these are the videos that I have made since doing this class online to show you guys how to use this program. Um, we'll kind of start it uh, on Wednesday. I'll kind of go over some stuff uh, in our Zoom meeting, but then these videos will kind of be used to um, supplement that. So you can kind of have um, just a another resource showing all the, the steps that I, I'll show you guys over Zoom. So you'll just kind of watch those videos, kind of go step by step and make sure you can do all those things on your own as we are um, as we're going through the class. But though that's going to be a good resource out there um, to figure this out. So as soon as you get that email from Adobe, go ahead and get Illustrator installed on your computer and get that um, start working through those videos and taking care of the basics as as quick as you can because um class is going to start moving really quick and we're going to be covering you know all the art concepts but then you're going to need to combine all the art concepts that we're like practicing in our sketchbook with the digital art using adobe illustrator so it's going to take a little while but you're going to kind of combine that digital side with the art concepts to create some cool digital art um, but you need to know how to use illustrator confidently so you can um so you can do that And then other than that, the, uh, the, the supplies will just be, you know, sketchbook with pens or pencil for drawing. And you will also need, I assume all you guys have some sort of cell phone or digital camera to take pictures of your sketches. So you'll have to get your sketch from your sketchbook into your computer. The best way to do that is just taking a picture of it with your phone. Um, and that works for most of the things. If we get back to the lab on campus, then there are scanners there that you can also use to scan your sketches and get it into the computer. Um, but I find, I mean, I found that the taking a picture of it with your phone works just as well as those scanners for the most part, unless you really need a super detailed scan of something which we won't really need for this class. All right. I think that is all the basic overview of the class for now. Any questions on any of that stuff that I just went over? Questions on Illustrator? Assignments, projects? Uh, yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, what's up? Uh, actually, about the, uh, about the canvas, about mm -hmm. uh, in, in the grade. Uh, yep. So uh, it seems like I, uh, I'm missing all the something like, is it from the last quarter? Let me pull it up really quick. Yeah, because I see that this is that like uh, the assignment is still like last year, September 28th. Oh, weird. Is that, is that only me? Is it just me, right? Uh, January 8th, February 7th. I thought I updated all the due dates. Yeah, but uh, I, I, yeah. 
There's I try to I try to check the the challenge the challenge. Oh, yeah. the drawing challenges. Yes, and yes, yes. Not, not only the grade, also the also the challenge. The grade and the challenge just like uh, yeah, I, they're um, not. Yeah. Where are we? Like the like this line weight drawing one. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and the grade two. So I just like they they said the due date is last year. Yeah, so that's here in the discussions. I believe these ones, yeah, these ones have not been updated yet. Oh, okay. So these are the drawing challenges. We won't do all of these, I don't think. Um, yeah, because... I, look up, I look up some of them. <laughs> like, <can> you guys, <laughs> were you able to look at these? Yeah, able to look at it, but yeah. yeah. Let me just go ahead and turn these off for now. I'll do that after class. So yeah, don't worry about the due dates for these. I'm gonna just turn these off. Um, so I will just, it, we won't end up doing all of these because hopefully we'll be back in the classroom and do some of these just in class. Okay. Um, so if these end up being due, like I think we will do this line weight drawing this week. Um, and maybe this abstract composition one. But if we do any of these, I, I'll send you guys a message. I'll say when it's due and I'll change the due date on there. Yeah, okay. So yeah, don't worry about uh, these drawing challenges. If we, the ones we end up doing, I'll send you guys separate messages for, and I'll change the due date before um, it's due. That makes sense? Yeah, that makes sense, yeah, it is. <laughs> cool. Yeah, these are, yeah, these are all just carryovers from last quarter or whatever. Um, and I, I don't end up doing all of them, and some of them I end up changing and changing the order of and stuff like that. But all the big, the big four assignments, all those due dates should be set and good to go. So those are the main ones you should kind of keep your eye on. The other ones, I'll let you guys know as they come up. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, cool. If anything comes up as we uh, continue the lecture today, just let me know. All right, so let's start our lecture. Oh, yeah. All right, so yeah, here's my uh, email if you guys need to get in touch with me. Um, but I suggest just messaging me through the um, inbox here on Canvas, um, because when I get the message here, it pops up in my email and here on Canvas, so I'm kind of notified two times. You can use just my email address as well if you need to, but um, going through Canvas is probably the best way. Um, this is my uh, Instagram if you guys want to see what sort of artwork I do and my website. So if you guys ever take art classes, I suggest to kind of look at, um, see what sort of art your teachers do. It's just kind of good to see what sort of art they do because uh, the art that your teachers make will kind of end up influencing your own style and the own work, the work that you make. So it's always just good and interesting, I say, to look at the, uh, the art that your teachers make on their own um, as you take their class. All right. So what is design, okay? What is design? So this class is called beginning design. So can you guys think of any sort of design um, out there, design professions, design jobs, different things you guys have heard of before? Um, well, obviously there's designers for um, book covers. Yeah. Every time you buy a book, someone designs the cover of it. Exactly. Book cover I mean, design. Billboards. Yep. Kind of just all advertisement in general. Advertisements. Yeah. Like packaging on a anything you buy. Oh yeah, packaging. That's a good one. Like when you buy an Apple product, they have great packaging design. Let's check the chat here. Graphic design. Yes, exactly. Graphic design. Game design, exactly. Designing video game levels. 
Web design, yep, designing websites, how people interact with the website. Is it cleared? Can you see the different sections of the website? Fashion design, yep. So these are all different types of design. Um, I like, I read a, a description of design as to plan. And you, for this definition, you're planning how people interact with these different things. How do people interact with a book cover? Can they clearly read the title? Can they see the author? Do they get a, um, a general idea of what the story is? A billboard design or advertisement design, can they see what the product is? Can they tell the story of the product? Packaging design, is it easy to open? Can you see what the product is? Graphic design, designing logos. Can you tell what the company is just by looking at the logo? Game design, plan out different levels. Web design, plan out all that. Fashion design, planning form versus function of clothes. Is it more about how the clothes look or more about how the clothes work? Okay, so all of these or lots of these types of design, not, maybe not all of them, but oftentimes they start with some sort of sketch or a drawing. You know, if you're drawing uh, graphic design and you're designing logos, you know, and you do the old Nike logo, it's a very simple shape, but they probably came up with all different sorts of shapes first to determine a good logo. And you have to sketch it all out first. So for our class, beginning design, I like to think of this class as, let me turn this off. Composition design. I think this would be a better name for this class, composition design. So in this class, we are going to be designing compositions. So as I mentioned before, everything in this class is works for two-dimensional art. Okay, so any art that is on a flat surface. So for us, drawing on your sketchbook and a piece of paper, that's a flat surface, and drawing, creating art on the, comp, uh, on the computer. The computer screen is a flat surface. So we are designing compositions on a flat surface. Well, what is a composition? Composition is basically a frame. So all of the art that we're making for this class basically has to fit inside of a frame, but there's unlimited possibilities that you guys can put inside of this frame. Like you say, this frame could be a fo photograph. So some people that have taken photography, there's going to be some overlap. This frame could be a comic book panel. So, um, it could be a still shot frame from a movie. It could be a watercolor painting. So the principles and the overall um, kind of foundational skills that we use in this class, you can then take and push it into any different discipline. You can go in and use the things we learn in this class and take it to photography. You can take it to film, you can take it to um, just doing sketches in your sketchbook. Whatever you want to do and wherever you want to take these skills, it's applicable for all sorts of different two-dimensional art. So anything that's 2D, anything that fits inside of a composition um, is what this class can be used for. So I think that's what's really fun about this class. I like teaching it because it helps me um, keep up with my own fundamentals and I get to practice this when I teach it. Uh, I get to practice it when I draw stuff in class. And I really like to see what you guys all come up with for the different assignments, for the different drawing challenges and things like that. Um, because it just helps me see you guys come up with things that I may have never thought of. And since it's all based in the foundation and the fundamental skills, it's always just going to help you guys get better and become better designers and create better um, compositions. So as we go through the quarter, um, we'll create compositions for different purposes. So sometimes we'll create a composition to be scary. Sometimes we'll create a composition to have a clear focal point. 
Sometimes we'll create a composition to be very busy. Sometimes we'll create abstract comp compositions. Sometimes we'll create represent representational compositions. Um, so it's all going to be um, applicable to a lot of different stuff but it's all fitting stuff inside of a frame. So it's kind of having those creative constraints on us. How can we create something interesting, exciting, calm, serious, um, something with a sense of movement, all that fits inside of a frame and inside of a composition. So basically every project we start, you're gonna start out by drawing a bunch of small frames and small compositions in your sketchbook and drawing a bunch of different ideas. Okay, so this, something that looks kind of like this here is how a lot of your, or how all the projects are gonna start, okay? So it should be fun. Um, it should be able to be, you know, taken to whatever your interest is. So if you're really into photography or that's what you have your, uh, some experience in, you can draw on that. You can use that experience for stuff that you've done before. Um, and you can take that and go with that. And then, you know, when, after this class too, you'll be able to have kind of these foundational skills and that will make you better for whatever you want to kind of take, whether it's other classes or just your own personal work as well. Does anyone here just keep um, a sketchbook for themselves and just kind of draw for themselves in a sketchbook? Whether just doodles, fun ideas, creating illustrations or characters or drawing things you see. Does anyone just kind of keep a sketchbook for themselves? Yeah, I have a couple. Nice, good. So that's kind of the habit we'll have to get into is just kind of keeping that ongoing sketchbook um, and for all these problems, like the best way to think through a problem and come up with a creative solution, come up with a creative composition is gonna to be to draw that idea out. So now let's talk about abstract compositions versus representational here. Let's make a new page here. Represent. Has anyone ever heard of abstract art or abstract compositions or made abstract art in in the art classes or for themselves? Yep. <laughs> What's the general idea of abstract art or abstract compositions? Um, I guess to the best of my explanation, yeah, or whatever. It's you have an idea in mind, but you don't, but you choose something kind of unconventional or an unconventional way to show it mm -hmm. where it's like sometimes someone will have an idea of what it is not all the time <laughs> like you can't quite tell what it is right yeah I mean I guess I, I think I kind of think of like the cubism movement when I think of abstract yes very much so I have some examples to show you guys later from that from the cubism movement exactly okay so I like to think of it as representational is a thing, you know. It is trying to draw an actual thing for representational. It's a person, it's a landscape, it's a object. It's something we can clearly tell what it is. And then for abstract, you're basically just using shapes, lines, and value let me put the word value in here let's let me explain what value is really quick value is a good vocabulary word so everyone write down value in your notes there um, value is basically shades of gray so there's no color in this class so we're just going to be working in shades of gray value Basically grayscale images, black and white images. And the reason we do that is because 
color is very, very complicated. Color is its own beast. Um, if you guys keep going in the design program here at Green River, there are multiple color classes you guys can take. Um, so for this class, we just eliminate color and we just wanna concentrate on the use of value, okay? So whenever you're talking to me about your art, um, there will be some small writing portions in this class and you're, or if you're writing about your art, use the term value. So say, I chose to use a lot of dark values in this composition. So that would mean dark values or um, to make something stand out, I really used a light value. So that would mean using those lighter shades of gray. So using that value, okay. So technically for abstract art, you can use color, but we won't be using it for this class, okay. So I'm just gonna talk about value. So meaning shades of gray, light and dark. Does that make sense? So value is going to be very important throughout this course. We'll come back to it a lot. So abstract, you're making a composition that uses just shapes, lines, and value. So I can just start filling in this composition with some shapes, some lines, and then some values. So I just made a composition. So as I draw stuff here on the screen, um, you guys should be drawing along and just basically copying what I'm doing in your sketchbook. You don't have to copy it exactly. Like, so basically just create an abstract composition in your sketchbook right now. It can be very simple. It can be complicated. But as you see, I just made an abstract composition. I'm not trying to draw an actual thing. I'm just drawing shapes, lines, and value. For representational, you're drawing an actual thing, you know. I'm drawing a person. You can tell what it is. Not a very good drawing of a person, but that's a person. Okay? So between these two, there's a whole bunch of gray area or in, oftentimes in art, something isn't just representational or just abstract. A lot of times there's the combination of the two in a little ways, in subtle ways. Um, you can abstract things so they are partially abstracted. You can use combine representational and abstract together. Um, but each one has its advantages. Sometimes um, people like to work better in abstract if they have a tough time drawing actual things. So when we're drawing representationally, to draw a person, you have to know where the eyes go, where the eyebrows go, where the ears go. How do I draw a mouth? How do I make someone look like they're smiling? How do I draw hair? But when you're drawing abstractly, you don't have to worry about that. All you have to worry about is arranging shapes together in different ways, okay? But also sometimes people like to draw actual things and they have a hard time coming up with inspiration and ideas to just drawing shapes, lines, and value, okay? Um, so each, each of you guys will kind of have a preference the more you work. Um, some of our drawing challenges and assignments, I will say, work abstractly or work representationally for this assignment or this project. Um, for all of, a lot of my work doing, you know, comic books and storyboards and illustrations, things like that, all of my work is representational. But oftentimes I like to just practice composition. And as I practice composition, um, it can sometimes be nice to just work abstractly because it takes off that pressure of having to draw something. Sometimes it's nice to just play around with composition and see what I get. And sometimes, you know, I can be drawing something abstract 
let's just start here. Let's try. So I'm just going to try and, you know, work in some rectangular shapes here, work on this little abstract composition, stacking rectangles. I, sometimes I think about like, you know, I'm just stacking blocks on each other. But what does this start to look like now as I stack all these abstract rectangles on top of each other? Buildings. Cityscape. Yeah, then it starts to, sometimes that happens. So as I work, I'll be like, oh, it starts to look like something. So you'll start to see that. Um, as you work abstractly, you'll start to see representational ideas come through. And lots of times these things can, you know, your abstract compositions can inspire your representational compositions and you go back and forth. So it's not like just one or the other. Um, lots of times they, there's not a, you know, a, a hard, fast divide between the two, okay? Um, so I suggest as we go through the quarter and as we work through stuff, um, you know, try both, especially, you know, on the first, the first three projects, you have the option to work representationally or abstract. And I suggest kind of trying both. So try some that are abstract, some that are representational. You'll learn more about your own style and you're about your own preferences if you try both as well. Do you guys have some sketches in your sketchbook? Are you guys drawing some little abstract compositions? Yeah. Okay, good, good. Take a minute, everyone just draw. One more minute, draw a, a couple compositions, fill them up with shapes, lines, and value. Or you can switch it into something representational if you like as well. I like oftentimes, you know, working and combining um, the two together in one composition can have a really nice touch to it. Let's say, uh, yeah, let's do like a. Got a bird here, you know, bird. This is representational. This is an actual thing. Then I can just throw in some abstract shapes behind the bird. And lots of times that can have a very nice, nice look to it where you combine abstract, abstract shapes and representational shapes. So I hope you guys are all drawing right now. It is going to be much easier in this class if you take the time and draw, okay? You can always just copy my ideas directly, like when we're in class. If you just need something to put that piece on paper and you don't really wanna think about what to draw, feel free to just copy what I'm doing. Um, I, when I was in art school, a lot of times I just copied what my teachers were doing. They were all way better artists than I was. So I was like, I'll just copy what you guys are doing. And that's a really good way to improve. And if you copy someone that's really good for a while, then eventually you'll come up with your own really good ideas. But putting the pen or the pencil on the paper is the best way to get better. And it's going to just help you guys a lot more in this class. So. Um, each project you'll need to turn in about 10 or 15 rough sketches, possibly more um, to show me your thought process and how you came up with a certain idea. So just get used to creating lots of small, quick drawings to help work that creative process to help come up with different compositions. And right now, we don't really have a point to these drawings. They're just drawings for the sake of drawing, which is a lot of fun to not have that pressure. 
eventually I'll be giving you guys ideas like draw something that has a clear focal point, draw something that has no focal points, draw something that seems scary, draw something that has a sense of motion to it, draw something that uses pattern. So there are less of you guys in here. Normally my class has 24 people. And so uh, I think we only have 12 people in here because it's supposed to be in person. So that'll be nice for you guys. Hopefully just uh, you will get a little bit more attention. I will be able to give your work a little bit more critical feedback and make sure you guys are all um, keeping up with everything and understanding what is going on. And hopefully if you guys have questions, I will have more time to answer your individual questions as well. Any questions on abstract compositions, representational compositions? The use of shapes, lines, and value? Okay. Let me pull up some examples here really quick. Abstract art versus representational art. Has anyone ever taken any art history classes by chance? Does anyone recognize this artist? This is Michelangelo. So we're gonna look here at some abstract art and some representational art um, really quick, just to kind of show you guys how some of the masters have dealt with the, those different subject matters. So this was Michelangelo. He was an artist during the Renaissance um, for like a long, long time in Western art. Um, the goal was to, you know, draw as realistically as possible. They didn't have cameras. Um, so it was really kind of amazing for people to come and look at this very realistic artwork. So you can see here, he's trying to paint this very realistically, super representationally. Lots of details in the hands and the hair and the highlights and the shadows, <coughs> things like that uh, to make things stand out really clearly. Um, so that was always their goal. And like for a long time, that was the goal of ours. How do I draw very, very realistically, very, very representationally? Here's another one. This is Rembrandt. So he was very concerned with showing light. Light and shadow to make that clear. Um, then all of a sudden, in, uh, around the mid 1800s, mid to late 1800s, the camera was invented and artists were like, well, what if I don't need to paint super realistically? We got cameras. What else can I do with art? So artists started to uh, kind of abstract their art. And so this is the Impressionists. So they started to kind of just look at color and light and not worried about painting things realistically. Um, so this is uh, Monet, an Impressionist. So he uh, kind of blurred the lines, didn't make it look realistic and just kind of focus on the colors he saw and really make those colors pop and stand out and exaggerated the colors as well. So this is the start of abstraction. So it's not all the way abstract, it's partially abstract. Okay, so this is what I talked about where one is not always one or the other. This is somewhere in the middle between abstract and representational. And then we had some artists like Picasso, who you guys have probably heard about. I think it's cool just looking at his own development as an artist, his own style um, abstracted as he aged and as he developed as an artist. So this is how he painted when he was 15, okay? 
It's pretty good for a 15 year old. Super realistic, very well done. That's a self portrait. And then as he developed, he started to invent him along with a bunch of other artists kind of invented cubism, which is basically a form of abstraction. Um, and they abstracted that art to make it just kind of different. They were kind of bored with drawing realistically. That's what people have been doing for hundreds of years. Um, so that was their goal is just to do something different. And how can I abstract this to make it interesting? And by the time he was old, I'm not sure if these ages are completely accurate here, but I think it gives you a general idea of how his style developed and he became more abstract. So he's leaning more towards just shapes and lines and values. So he still has a little bit of representational. You can see this is a face and a person with eyes and nose and a mouth, but it's not a realistic drawing. And uh, here's another one of his, you know, abstract art can really help with the uh, emotional impact. This is a giant mural called Guernica. I believe it's um, displaying scenes from the Spanish Civil War. So, you know, abstracting these faces allows you to kind of um, enhance the emotion. And then we had someone like Marcel Duchamp, another um, abstract artist and cubist working in the 1920s and so. So this piece here is called Nude Descending a Staircase. Does this look like a person going down a staircase in this image? I don't know. Somewhat see it. Somewhat, yeah. We get some, we definitely get some diagonal movement here, kind of like going down some stairs. These could kind of be seen as legs. But really, the, the title, New Descending a Staircase, is what um, we're kind of just clinging on barely to that representational art. So it's not, definitely not realistic. Um, but he's just clinging just barely to representational art by through the use of a title. Yeah, it makes it have more of a feeling than a visual thing. Exactly. It just feels chaotic. Yeah, very chaotic, very busy and a sense of movement in there. So that's kind of where they were pushing that art at, at that era. And a lot of these artists were kind of, they were trained in that realism and that representation art, and then they abstracted their art, which I find really interesting. Then we got to an artist like Kandinsky. And by this point, representational was completely gone. This one is called composition number eight. So this isn't clinging to representational art, it's just shapes, lines, and in his case, color. For us, it would be value to just create a composition. So representational art is completely gone by this point, just dealing in shape and line and color. Um, I like art, you know, we had a lot of animation and ca cartoon art simplifies art. So this is from Aladdin, you guys probably know. Um, it's not realistically drawn, but it is abstracted to a point where it is able to be animated and simplifying the facial features, simplifying the eyes and the nose and the mouth allows the animators to create movement and to create heightened sense of emotion in there as well. So there's all different types of abstracting that go on and kind of how much you abstract and how you abstract becomes a part of your own style. Something like this as well. It's still representational, but they're pushing it more towards shapes. It's more about simple shapes for these characters. And then it creates a really fun look, a really unique look, um, and becomes really part of this artist's style. So we will kind of talk about this throughout the quarter. Um, like I said, some of the assignments we will have 
um, I'll say create an abstract composition or create something representational or create a composition that has both representational and abstract elements in it. All right. So here we go, shapes, lines, and value. So we're gonna have a lecture on shape, line, and a number of lectures on value. So let's just start talking about line today. Line. So line is super important. Oops, sorry. Line. Line is the easiest and the most simplistic way to create a drawing or to create a work of art or to create a composition. If you hand a little kid, a three-year-old, a crayon, he's going to start drawing in line on a piece of paper. You know, you can draw a face just with a few lines like that. But it's something that's seemingly simple, you know, a line. But... Um, we need to be very careful with how we use line and where we use line as well. So the biggest thing I want you guys to think about is line variety. And line weight. So write down that line variety, especially. So I emphasize this from our first drawing challenge we'll have sometime this week or next week to the very final assignment in this class. Something you should always check on your artwork is do I have line variety in my work, okay? So how you use line and how you create a variety line becomes your own style. Um, and it kind of depends on what medium you're drawing with, whether you're drawing with pen or pencil or ink or digital, which we'll be doing later on. So how do you create a variety of line? So let's think of some different types of lines. What would you guys call this sort of line right here? Oops. How would you describe that line? Thick and horizontal. Yep horizontal. yep, horizontal, straight versus that one. Arced. Yep, an arc line. Can you guys think of any other type of lines I could draw? Any other sorts of lines that you could think of? It could be very simple or more complicated. Waves. Waves, yeah. Wavy line. Broken. Yeah, broken, exactly. Uh, broken or dotted. Any other ones? You guys can chime in in the chat too. What about this one? Angled, yeah, angled line, exactly. What would you call a line like this? Or one like, all right, here we go. About that line, put it next to this one. Put it next to this one. So you guys should be drawing all these lines down in your sketchbook or recreating them best you can. Because depending on what medium you're drawing with, you. It will depend on how you draw these different lines.
Okay, so thick right here. Sketchy. Textured. This one's important, texture line. Remember that one. Make sure you have something written down with a texture line. And this little guy is thin, a thin line. And a tapered line, meaning thick to thin. So there's like 10 different types of lines. So as you're going through your work or an assignment or a drawing, just ask yourself before you turn in, do I have good line variety in there? Okay. So you don't want all your lines to look the exact same. You want your lines to look different. And when we start to work in Adobe Illustrator, um, it has a whole bunch of different types of lines you can create in there. So it's good to think about how to create those different lines, both in your sketchbook and when you get into Adobe Illustrator. And that's something I, that's one of the first things I look at when I see your guys' projects or assignments you, you turn in. Since this is one of the first things we're talking about the first day, I wanna see that you have good line variety in your drawings. So having this line variety is kind of the difference between creating a so-so piece of artwork and something that really pops off the page. Um, and you want the line quality, so the sketchiness, the texture, the taper line to kind of match what you're drawing. Something more organic, call this one organic. versus something very straight. Okay. So make sure you guys have these down in your sketchbook page. It's something I am always looking for and something that can just really make your own artwork pop. All right. So this drawing I'm making right here, what is, if I turn this into an, for an assignment, and I asked you guys, how can I improve this drawing? What looks off about this? What would you guys say? You've used one value to represent different portions of a drawing between foreground and background. Exactly, I've used one, value isn't quite the right word, very close, but I've used one, Line weight. Mm, yeah. Line weight. So that's basically the thickness of a line. So that's really important as well. So line weight, line variety. So all these lines here are the same thickness. So hopefully this drawing kind of hurts your eyes a little bit. I know it, it feels weird to me just looking at this drawing. Oops. So if, if this was turned in, I would say you need to redo this drawing and have more line variety and have a line weight. So weight is thickness. So 
So it's not necessarily a bad composition. It could be okay. And just having the ability to adjust that line weight and that line quality will change it a lot. And you mentioned the foreground and background. That's a good way to think about what type of line weight I should use. So in the foreground, I'm going to use a thicker line. And then as I go back into the distance, I'm gonna make that line a little bit thinner and thinner. And this just kind of organizes the composition. Because right now in this one, where everything is the same, everything has equal attention. We like to look at things that have a big, bold outline around it. That stands out much more than things with thin lines. So right now, my eye is gonna look at this building here in the foreground because it has a thicker line around it. And even thinking about line quality, so if I want to add a, this little smokestack back here, this is where maybe I would come and do, maybe use a really thin line, or I can use one of those texture lines. Texture lines, remember those. So I can create a different texture for this smoke or for clouds. And then for something like the, uh, the moon there off in the distance, I can use a very thin line because thin lines will feel further away than thicker lines. Thicker lines feel closer and get more attention. Thin lines kind of fade away into the background. All right, so everyone take a second and you can kind of draw your own version of this. Um, if you only have time to draw one, I would say draw this one that has the different variety in there. And kind of just think about labeling these different lines within one composition. So thick here, medium, texture up here, sketchy lines here. And having those different types of lines will create visual interest and just create a more pleasing composition overall. There's no one way to do this. Everyone kind of treats it differently. Again, it depends on what you're drawing with and um, kind of your own personal style as well. But I will see final projects get turned in that look too close to this. And my first thing is always check your line weight, check your line variety. Any questions on any of this? Does this make sense to think about line weight, line thickness, line variety? At least to me, this makes sense. Okay, good. Like it's just a really good check, you know, as you're working, what's my line variety? And sometimes I'm drawing with like, um, like a thin technical pen and it's harder to get that line variety. So depending on what you're drawing with, pencil, sometimes you have to push down really hard to get that dark line or, or touch it very lightly to get a light line. Um, pins, you might have to go over a line several times to build it up and make it thicker. Um, sometimes I'll draw with two mediums. So I'll draw with a pin and a pencil, use the pencil for kind of the texture and sketchy lines, and then a pin for um, the thicker lines. Sometimes I'll draw with a Sharpie to get really thick, bold, dark lines. Um, 
but it'll take some experimenting and that's what your sketchbook's for is just kind of playing around and seeing what sort of different line quality you can get. All right, let me pull up some images of artists that use line really well. This is the artist Mobius. So he is, Mobius is a French artist. He's uh, worked in illustration and comic books, did a lot of sci-fi art. Um, so every class I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you guys uh, artwork by masters. Just looking at really good art and looking at masters who have made art makes you a better artist. So these are all artists I've come across that other people have introduced to me. Um, so I like to bring in a wide variety as well. We'll look at some animation, illustration, fine art. Um, we'll look at some cinema, things like that. We'll look at photography. Um, but this artist Mobius, it, this whole composition is made just out of line. And so he's drawn here with a very thin technical pin. Um, so he doesn't have a lot of thick to thin variety. What he has to do is build up the line to get darker areas like in the lips and eyebrows and eyelashes. He repeats the line a bunch to get, um, you know, create darker areas. He curves the line around objects, around this cylinder form to make it feel round. Curves line around the clouds there to give the clouds volume. He puts a lot of lines in some areas to make it very busy here and then leaves other areas more blank and sparse. So he's using a very restrictive medium that doesn't get that much variety. So he has to be creative with how he gets um, a variety of line and he can make it work through, you know, repetition of line and building it up in different places to get darker values. So he has a very distinctive style with how he uses line. This is the artist Glenn Keane. He's an animator that worked in uh, most of the 90s Disney movies, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, Tarzan. How do you describe the lines here that he's using? And what do you think he's drawing with actually? Based on the smudging, I would guess like a charcoal pencil. Yeah, exactly. Charcoal pencil, and what, what kind of line quality can you get with that charcoal pencil? You can get a lot of variance in opacity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see the darker areas to the lighter areas, especially between pressure and rubbing it off. Mm -hmm. So he built. Yeah, he builds it up right here in the face. So that charcoal pencil allows him to get a variety. So it's very different than, uh, where did Mobius go? Where did he go? Very different than the uh, Mobius lines. Where the... So these are both using line here, but very, very different styles because of that medium and because of how the, the artist uses it. This is very loose, it's very fast, and it's also very bold where you can get the really, really dark, but also the really, really light lines. You can smudge it some areas to get some blurriness, um, but it's very expressive um, and allows him to get the overall shape of this character and allows him to get that emotion on the face of the character as well. So every artist does it differently um, and it becomes part of your style but you still want that variety in there. So really loose light lines here versus the very dark lines around the eyebrow, nose and mouth. So versus drawing with like a brush pen where you get really nice thin to thick lines here around the face, thin to thick, thin to thick. This is a uh, Bruce Tim. This is an animator and comic book artist. 
This is Charles Gibson. He is drawing much more carefully with line. He's drawing with a fine nib pen that you dip in ink. So you can get some very, very light. Look how light and careful those are on the face of the women here to show that curve around the jaw and around the neck and then darker, thicker lines there in the hair. So main thing from this, check your line quality with every, um, everything you draw in this class. Okay. And uh, art always starts with line too, because it's quick to just put a line down and you can create a shape just with the line. Before you fill in value or um, pattern or anything like that, just using a simple line to put down can give you a lot of information. All righty. So that is just about it for today. Any questions from anything today? Class supplies, abstract art, representation art, line quality, any of the assignments, Canvas? Um, going through the syllabus, it said something about a um, the black portfolio folders. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, you do not need to worry about that. Good question. That okay. Was, <laughs> uh, I should go in and change that. That's from past quarters a while ago. I, I don't use that. Anymore. Okay. Yep. Good question. Attention to detail. Yeah, all the work will just be turned in digitally in through Canvas, even when we get back into the classroom. Um, so I'll show you guys how to save your work is like nice, clean PDFs with multiple pages in it and stuff like that. Any other questions? Okay, so um, I will see you guys on Wednesday. So check, keep an eye on your emails. Um, Hopefully you are getting a message soon about how to use or how to download and install Adobe Illustrator. I hope you get that before um, Wednesday because on Wednesday, I'm just gonna kind of give you a general overview of what you should be learning and practicing in Adobe Illustrator. Um, and then you're gonna kind of go and take that and use the, that video link I sent you earlier um, to start to practice Adobe Illustrator on your own. And you can go and take a look at that first assignment. The first assignment isn't very creative or based around a lot of art. It's just um, getting used to the Illustrator program. And then the second project, that will start to be more about combining the art concepts we're practicing with and creating art in Adobe Illustrator. But the first project, again, not, not that creative. Um, just getting you used to using Adobe Illustrator. All right, guys, well, that is it for the first class. Um, I'll leave this open for a second if anyone has any individual questions as you log off. But other than that, I will see you at four o'clock on Wednesday. Um, and just keep an eye on your emails and messages um, to look for that email from Adobe about downloading that, okay? Okay. Thank you. All Thank right, you. guys. Yep. Have a good rest of your evening. You too. Bye. Bye. See ya.